So in order to cushion the impact, the government is introducing two new concession schemes for low-income workers and persons with disabilities. The new schemes will begin on July the 6th. Our low-income workers will enjoy 15% off adult fares and persons with disabilities will get a 25% discount and will also not have to pay additional fares for distances beyond 7.2 kilometers. About 400,000 low-wage workers and 50,000 persons with disabilities are expected to benefit in the first year. Let's say burden the, for me personally to travel every day daily so I can uh, save more on the money to use it for other uh, expenses that I need to use it for. So it helped me a lot. Uh. I say got emergency to my daughter, I can use this money for my daughter. And then because I get I got that money so I can uh, take I say I cannot take the bus, I can take the taxi. Well, to discuss the issue in further detail, I have with me in studio member of the Transport Government Parliamentary Committee, uh, Janelle Puticherry. So, Janelle, thank you very much for coming in today. Let's uh, talk about the fare increase first. Uh, a 3.2% hike, the council says, is higher than previous adjustments. Uh, what's the rationale behind this? Well, there's a few things we have to consider. The first is, as you've rightly pointed out, there hasn't been an adjustment for a while. I think pegging it or at least taking into consideration the median wage increase this year, mm -hmm. it's a very important way of making sure that it's a reasonable increase that people can, can manage. Okay, so what we, went out, uh, what we did was we went out to talk to the public to see what you think about the changes. So let's uh, hear what you had to say. At this timing, uh, everybody is not doing very well. The increase is too fast. The MRT itself is not even stable yet. Okay, now the traffic is uh, getting more, so I think they, uh, they increase the price. It's quite uh, reasonable, I would say. So it seems like you know most people don't see too concerned about the fair hike. The only thing that they want is to see service levels improve, which I don't think is uh, too much to ask of uh, operators. It's a perfectly reasonable expectation. I think you know, increasing the level of confidence that people have in public transport is going to be one of the ways to persuade people to take public transport. Uh, things will happen. Occasionally, things will break down. But people have to have the confidence that when things go wrong, they'll be handled properly. All right. Um, the council says that the fare increase is significantly lower than the expected average national wage increase in Singapore. So in a sense, they're saying that it is affordable, but to the average Singaporean, uh, how do you think that they will, they will view this? Well, I think the fact that it's less than the average wage increase is important. But I think the other thing to take into account is the broadening of the base of concessionary fares. And it's up to, I think, 1.5 or 1.7 million people right. who are going to fall into that uh, category of a concessionary fare. So even if it doesn't benefit you directly, if you talk about your family, your extended family, the chances are that somebody that you are helping or is part of your extended network benefits from that concessionary fare is quite large. I mean, 1.5 million of our population in that concessionary fare category is a significant Number. Okay, so right now we're seeing a 3.2% fare increase and then uh, by next year the remaining 3.4% could kick in. So that's quite a significant amount. Yes. So next year's projection, well, um, we'll have to see what the wage increase is as well. I'm okay. hoping that's going to be, be a continued part of the consideration. It's not part of the fare formula or okay. so forth. It appears to be a guidance um, and I think it's a very reasonable thing to be doing. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at the reactions to the new concessions for low-wage workers and persons with disabilities. Uh, about half a million of them uh, will benefit from the schemes, but how much will this cost the government and is this really sustainable? Well, the sustainability is a very important consideration and that's one of the reasons why we can't be too bold in the, the, the size of the step that we're taking because the network as a whole, the system as a whole has to be viable and the concessions need to be sustainable over the long term. So I think it's a good step. So we have very important concessions that have been made. Uh, people have asked, could there be more? 
Um, I think we, let's take this first step and see how it works out. So $50 million for a start is, is all right? Well, <laughs> it appears to be working okay. uh, from, the, from the, what the government is saying, so let's see if we can keep this up. But in the interim, are they going to get any form of financial assistance before everything kicks in? So there's going to be transport vouchers. So it's going to take a while to operationalize some of these um, concessionary fares, uh, especially those that are linked to the low-income workers and so forth. So the government's making available uh, transport vouchers for people who are going to then be eligible for the concessionary fares mm -hmm. later on. So that's a way of then uh, getting the help out earlier while the scheme is waiting to kick in. Okay, so 